If it is your first time, welcome to New Covenant. My name is Joe, uh, and I'm, I don't know, they call me the discipleship pastor around here, whatever that means. I'm still trying to learn what discipleship is, so uh, we're all in this, in this walk, in this journey, in this fight together, but uh, I'm excited. It's kind of like the Lord knows what he's doing. Lee asked me weeks ago uh, to speak today, and then... Of course, they're, they're out, so it's like he just, he knows what he's doing, and uh, he has foresight when, when we do not. But we're going to go into this message. I, I believe the Lord's downloaded a message. This, this isn't just something I concocted. Sat down, spent some time with him this week, and it might be kind of a different, different message, but I believe it's from him, and uh, whatever is of Joe... Whatever is man-made in this message, just let it crash and burn and do away with it. But what's of the Lord? And if the Holy Spirit pricks you and moves, man, don't stiff arm that. Don't stiff arm that. I want to open up reading uh, it's one of our, I guess it would be our foundational passage in, uh, in this message. But it comes out of Genesis 12. And Genesis 12 is really a, a huge, big-time foundational passage for the whole Bible. Everything kind of builds on it. And there's many different directions you can go in Genesis 12, but the Lord kind of gave me a, a different route that I didn't see coming. But I want to read these, these opening verses congregationally, so don't leave me hanging here. Uh, it's Genesis 12, verse 1 through 3. I think we got it on the screen, but let's read Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you All the, say that again, all the family, one more time, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Whew, hallelujah. You part of that, all them families. Father, we bless your name, and Lord, we thank you. As it's already been said over and over, we thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. And there's an army gathered under this roof today. So, Lord, as we press on in this service, press on in this message, may yours truly die upon this platform, and may the spirit of King Jesus come alive up in this place. And in that mighty, awesome, most holy name, the church said, amen. So as we close out 2023 and look to the new horizon of 2024, I just want you to know here at NCF, we are far from being a a, a perfect church, a perfect congregation. If you want that, you may as well walk out the back doors because we ain't that. But what I can promise you is we are pressing on and striving here, seeking the Lord for wisdom, for revelation, for his direction as we move forward and especially in these days ahead and especially because, y'all, it's the last days. Whether today's the last day or whether there's a hundred more years, we're in the last days. But there's been some real conversation over the last several weeks, kind of behind the scenes in our, in our staff meetings and so forth. There's, there's been, it just feels like, a, not that we haven't been honest before, but it just feels like there's a, there's a little extra honesty and, and rawness when we gather around a, a table together in our conversations and when we look at where the church is and, 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 and what we're called to be in these days. And, and you want to know where we landed? I, I, I can't say that we got this new never heard of or like never seen before revolutionary plan that we're getting ready to unveil. It's not really like that, but, but we have been seeking the Lord. And what I can promise you again is that we're not heading in some little cute, gimmicky, 2024, man-made, manipulated um, thing that we've just drawn up and concocted up. 
in the background here. Our focus this year is actually the ancient original plan of God, which is good old discipleship. Getting back to the basics of our faith (laughs) and growing as disciples or followers or students of King Jesus. To, to leaning in and pressing in wholeheartedly to become what the Bible calls complete and mature in Christ. I'm still trying to figure out what that means. We're all on this journey. And Pastor Lee, he's, he's, um, he's supposed to be speaking next week for having the, the, the New Year kickoff um, message, and the Lord's been giving him some things. So he's going to go into more details of what the year's going to look like. But maybe this is like a, a forerunner, a, a pre-whatever to to what he's bringing. And I believe this is the heart here at NCF, but we, we want to be a people who are constantly awake, constantly alert, full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, and effective, bearing much fruit in these latter days. And honestly, this is what the Big C Church should have been focusing on. All along. But because we got this stuff called flesh, we got an adversary that hates us and our God and hates what's going on. And then we're just locked up in this Babylonian world system that hates anything of the Lord as well. Because of that, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to get deceived. It's easy to get derailed from the simple yet God-sized mission that the Lord himself left us with a couple thousand years ago. It's easy to get caught up in all the man-made, stress that, man-made tradition and religion and doctrine rather than just the simple instructions that the word has within the pages, Genesis to Revelation. This word disciple I like the word. It's a pretty cool word, but it's a, it's a nice uh, Bible word, which simply means a student, a follower of a rabbi or a teacher. So our desire as Christians, as believers, as followers of the greatest rabbi to ever walk this earth, our desire should be to want to wanna think like him, to want to talk like him, to want to act like him. To want to do the things he did. Yes. To be like him. And this may sound like a tall task, and boy, oh boy, it is. But God Almighty, in his kindness, in his grace, in his ridiculous mercies that are fresh every day, he's paved the way and connected the dots for this to become a reality in our lives. But sadly, there's been much manipulation and a whole bunch of spin put on the Word of God through man-made teachings, man-made philosophies, man-made doctrines through the years, and getting people to say a prayer, sing a little song, maybe even throw a few little bucks on the plate, and then go to church on repeat until it's your time to go home or Jesus comes back. And that's what we do as Christians. But the problem is, and it's, it's a pretty big problem, is that's not really what the Bible teaches. I mean, don't get me wrong. Praying is a good thing, and it's expected amongst disciples. Singing and getting your praise on and worshiping the Lord, oh, yeah, it's an amazing thing, and it's expected amongst disciples. Giving is a good thing, and it's expected amongst disciples. Being present and attending gatherings and being with God's people is so good and it's needed and it's expected amongst disciples. But through the centuries and through all the different eras of church history, we got somewhat of a weird thing going on. 
when it comes to church these days. <laughs> Especially here in good old Bible Belt America. You know the holiest place in the world. But through the centuries, man has interjected himself and his opinions and his desires and a whole lot of religion and stuff that makes me want to vomit. But I've been a part of the problem. That's turned this whole church thing into quite a strange thing. And just a surface level reading of scripture exposes this reality. But then if you just dig and dig and you start digging into more and more scripture, then you really see that's not God's agenda at all. There may be some folks in here like, who is that heretic up in that platform right there? Get that man out. Hang on with me. But really, when you dig into scripture and you see how real and raw and gritty but powerful it is, God doesn't want a bunch of religious weirdos who pray a prayer, sing a song, and go to church on repeat until he comes back. That's weird. But I'm guilty of that. And I've been a part of the problem. If you have suffered from the disease called churchitis, and maybe you've been on a hardcore prescription called religion and tradition for years, maybe even decades, Maybe you, maybe you call yourself a believer, a Christian. Yeah, I'm a follower of Jesus. But you haven't actually experienced and tasted his goodness and his power. And, but you see it evident in others, but you're like, I just, I, I haven't. Maybe your faith is honestly no more than just mere customs and formalities and just church attendance and, and just being real raw honest you just don't know how to walk out this faith thing I want you to know I'm praying for you and there's other people praying for you here and when I say I'm praying for you I'm not saying that in a <laughs> this one right here ain't doing it filling with shame, guilt, condemnation. Ugh! There's you a holy slap because you ain't doing it. No! I'm praying for you because I love you. And you got a band of brothers and sisters here who love you too. And we're just in your corner going, to, oh, we want you to taste it. And I'm not saying I got the whole thing figured out because I've only tasted a small portion. But what I have tasted, oh, I've only caught a small glimpse of the glory of God, but what I have seen, God leaves me wanting more. And right here, right now, the last day, 2023, with every bit of chutzpah in my soul, in the all-powerful name of Jesus the Messiah, and I say this confidently. This isn't just religious talk. I'm prophesying in his mighty name and believing new days ahead for you and your household. Days filled with revelation from on high. Days filled with the most amazing grace in your life. Days of blessing so you can be a blessing in return. Days where, woo, the weighty chains of man-made doctrine, tradition, and religion break and fall away. And you come into contact with the real deal presence of the Lord Most High. Days where you find joy, no more shame, where you find joy in daily Bringing your mess to the Lord. Quit trying to wrestle with it and play with it and wash it off and clean your heart. No. Days where you find joy in crucifying your flesh 
to the cross and all of its lusts and sinful, selfish desires, and King Jesus comes alive in your daily life. Jesus, the Son of God, didn't leave heaven in all of its glorious perfection and come here to this sin-ridden, corrupt earth, born amongst stinking animals in a barn as a lowly, gentle, humble baby for what much of the modern-day church has become. He he, He didn't live out his life here on earth being treated like an utter fool, called the most terrible things, accused of working with Satan, in fact, even being possessed with the devil, accused of being a blasphemer, which, of course, this led to his eventual, um, just enduring the most horrific treatment and beatings, which, of course, led to his most horrific execution on a Roman crossbar. I can promise you, He did not go through all of this so he could raise up a multitude of religious disciples who pray a prayer, sing a song, and go to church on repeat. No, there's much more. And that's no shame, condemnation. That should encourage because there's more. So, with this said, what was, or may may I say, what is the purpose of Jesus? Jesus. And his example of a life lived out here on earth. His death, his resurrection, his sending of the Holy Spirit. For the sake of his people, why? What is the point of all that? Yes, it's to bring salvation and eternal life. Whoop, whoop, hallelujah to all that. But the other reality is right here, right now, we have a room full of born-again saints, or at least I hope so. If not, may may today be the day of that. But we're still walking this earth, so what are we to do? And I believe this is where the church has gotten lost in the sauce and gotten weak. Because even leadership in the church are confused and they don't know. They just spit the same mess that they were taught and came in and then now a couple thousand years later and Much of the church is totally confused on who Jesus is and what a disciple is and what we're to be. And and that's where I want to give my best effort, my best effort, by the power of the Spirit of God to meet you in this place today. And again, I don't have all the answers, but what I can say, if we seek him wholeheartedly, he, through the Holy Spirit, will lead us He will guide us, he will teach us, and he will meet you right where you are. So I believe step one is disciples. So we're talking, you who have gone to the Lord, you've repented, you've confessed your sin, you're like, man, I'm a sinner, I need a Savior, Jesus is the Savior. Woo, yeah, I need him, boom. This has happened. I'm talking about disciples where kind of we're in the door, you're born again, you're saved, but a lot of us just kind of get through the door and we're just like, I don't know what to do now. And I believe it can be found in two, at least step one, can be found in two little Hebrew words that are in the midst of that passage we read at the beginning of this message. And it's lech lecha. There's hope in those words. And it means to go forth. To go forth. It's kind of fun to say. Say it with me. Lech lecha. One more time. Lech lecha. It means to go forth or to go from or just, this. I, I like saying it like this, get going. Just get going. Our earlier passage from Genesis 12 where Adonai, the Lord Almighty, comes to Abram, and he gives him instruction to go. Like I said, it's one of those most important, fundamental passages which undergirds and sets up the rest of the Bible. But Genesis 12 is about God making covenant with Abram. We don't know much about Abram, kind of leading up to Genesis 12, not given a whole lot of detail, but we are told that he's married to a lady named Sarai. 
He had a father named Terah, two brothers, Nahor and Haran. And we're told that Abram's father, Terah, packed up the family, got his household, his belongings, his possessions, packed them up, and they left their homeland of Ur and headed towards Canaan, which we can kind of modern day say Israel was given to them. But they never made it to Canaan. Terah, Abram's father, decided just to settle. They never made it to Canaan, and they settled in a place called Haran. So with those just few details, we come to Genesis 12, where we have a 75-year-old Abram. 70, I'm not saying that's old, y'all. I'm not saying it's old, but I'm just saying he's got some experience under his belt. 75-year-old Abram. And that's where Abram is when the Lord comes to him in Genesis 12. I'm going to read it one more time with that all going on in your brain now. Genesis 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from, or lech lecha, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. What? The Lord going to bless him so he can be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, hallelujah, one more time, all the families of the earth will be blessed. These few verses are a big deal. And today we are beneficiaries of the love and grace of God. Because of his covenant words given way, 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 way back there in Genesis 12. In you, in Abram, all the families of the earth will be blessed. You, new covenant fellowship, were on God's heart. When he spoke these words to Abram some 4,000 years ago. I love this passage of scripture. But when Abram received these words, we kind of know the rest of the story through the Bible. This was the first time the Lord's showing up to Abram. Lord Almighty. And Abram, 75 years old, was in a very interesting place in his life. Married. He's also caring for his nephew Lot because his brother died. I'm sure he was also helping out his aging father who was getting older. And another detail we're given if we go to Joshua 24 is that Abram and his family were pagans. They worshipped other gods. They even made idols. Like they were deep in the thing. Abram wasn't like Mr. Holy seeking the Lord when the Lord showed up to him. And then Boom, we get to Genesis 12, and it just says, and the Lord said to Abram, go. Go and leave this land, which is probably very familiar and comfortable to you and yours. Go and leave your relatives behind. Go and leave your father and his household behind. I'm not telling you where you're going. You just got to trust me, and I'll show you. And if you obey, I'm going to lead you into blessing like you can't even dream of. And the very next words in verse 4 of Genesis 12 says, So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed. Man! I believe as Moses penned these opening books of the Bible. I believe Moses recorded these words in Genesis 12, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, to highlight Abram's immediate obedience. Lech, lecha. Abram got going. He went, he did the thing. He departed in total obedience to the Lord's command. Really don't know if there was any prior conversations, revelations between Abram and the Lord, but 
I don't know. I just don't know. Before we get to Genesis 12, but we just know that they were pagans, made idols deep in the thing. And, but when Abram heard from the Lord Almighty to lech lecha, he immediately lech lecha and was greatly blessed. Why do I share all this this morning? Because today, being a disciple, a follower of Rabbi Yeshua, King Jesus, in these 21st century times, it, that word, it, 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 carries a, it, it carries far more meaning and responsibility than pray a prayer, sing a song, and go to church on repeat. It's a journey. It's a daily walk with the Lord. It's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a life of living. Sometimes we can live life and really just be walking dead people who are useless and ineffective. No, this is a life of living. <laughs> it's a life of lech lecha, of going forth in full surrender, you know, with, with immediate obedience and full trust. And man, does that sound holy. And I think us in this room, man, we want to be that thing. I want to do that. And then I come to the end of service, and I'm going to pray the prayer, and I'm going to pour out my tears, and Monday morning's going to come, and I'm still going to be standing at the doorway like, God, I did the thing, though, and like I want to be a disciple, but how do I be that disciple? I think maybe when we hear that word, and maybe even in our American uh, culture and kind of the love of superheroes these days, it's almost like we want to pray the prayer, sing the song, go to church on repeat, and I'm rise up into this superhero disciple who's flying around saving the world. And it's going to look incredible. The graphics of my life are just going to, oh, man. People are going to look at me with amazement, and that's the whole problem. This thing comes back to me, 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 To where me, 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 increases. And Jesus, 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 Jesus actually decreases. As we take these ancient words from some 4,000 years ago. I want to fast forward 2,000 years. So we're not in the 21st century yet. No, we're like first century with Jesus. Fast forward 2,000 years from Abram's time. And here in just a minute, I'm going to go to Matthew 28. But I want to share something before we get there. Early on, as Jesus was beginning his ministry, and he was gathering his crew, gathering his team, his disciples... It's recorded in the Gospels. I know at least Matthew, Mark, Luke, that Rabbi Jesus, he hadn't been crucified and all that. So like he, he was just kind of coming on the scene. Wasn't really looked at as the Messiah yet. No, people were just getting to know him. But he was walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw some brothers out there fishing. He had Simon Peter, he had Andrew, he called them, went a little further, he saw James and John, called them. But when he called them, hey boys, come follow me. Yeah, out there in the Sea of Galilee, fish it, yeah, come, come follow me. Scripture tells us, <laughs> So here you have the Lord. They didn't really know it yet, but the, the Lord calling them. And they immediately, Scripture says, immediately left their father behind, left their boats behind, left their job behind, left it all behind. 
They left all that was familiar and what was their everyday comfortable reality. And they followed Jesus. Learning from him. To become like the rabbi. This would have been a great privilege in that day. Because he, he was a rabbi and they would have been like, oh, a rabbi's calling us lowly? This was unheard of in that day. So it was a great privilege to go follow the rabbi. So just like Abram, there was a call, a command to, to come, to leave where you are and go forth, to get going. And there was immediate obedience and surrender to his will. And that was right there at the beginning of Jesus' ministry here on earth. So now let's fast forward to the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth. And that's where we'll be in Matthew 28. <coughs> These are Jesus' last words recorded by Matthew. Starting in verse 16, it says, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee. Going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But, I love this but line in here. Because it's just, we, we can all resonate with this. Because yeah, we come in here Sunday morning, let's behold you Lord, let's adore you, I want to worship you. But, we still doubt. We're still human. We're still walking this thing out and battling every day. But, some of them doubted. Check these next words. Jesus came and told his disciples, I, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go. I think we can add in there leklaka. Therefore, go. And make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey woo, all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. What a statement of hope. I am with you always, even to the end of of the age. Man. The thing with passages like this is if you, like me, have been plagued with the disease of churchitis all your life, not that it's all a bad thing, I'm not trying to paint, but you know what I'm saying. Some of the most familiar passages can be some of the most un misunderstood. Some of us may be able to quote all them words right now, but we still sit back like, but how, how, do I, how do I do it? And as the Spirit of God was downloading and revealing this, this whole idea and the connections of Lech Lecha from the Old Testament to the New Testament and the story of Abram, this famous passage from Matthew 28 started weighing heavy on my mind and the Spirit of God was showing me things and I'm like, boy, the Bible really does fit together like a glove. Couldn't help but see the similarities, the, the parallels. The only difference is we are 4,000 years removed from Abram. A couple thousand years removed from Matthew 28 there. And we have far more knowledge and insight and revelation with, with much greater clarity than he had in that moment. Because, y'all, we got Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But 
We also have a couple thousand years of church history and tradition and a whole lot of man-made stuff which has made discipleship quite cloudy and murky and confusing when I believe the Lord always meant it just to be simple and straightforward. And we got to dig and we got to dig and 10 books around and it's like discipleship. I got to go get me a PhD level professor to teach me because I just go. And the Lord's like, I gave you the Holy Spirit. Spend time with me. It's not that hard. It's not easy. But it's, it's just not, it's not that hard either. But it is going to take some real faith in me. Here in Matthew 28, Jesus is telling his disciples, and we can interject ourselves into Matthew 28 there. It's speaking to us as well. You got to go. Just go. Go forward. Go forth. Just get going. You don't need to know all the details, just like Abram. You don't need to know the who's, the what's, the when's, the where's, the why's, or the how's. Don't worry about the details. And that's where our flesh gets real scared. Crucify that bad boy. Because the Lord's saying, just go. Don't worry. I got you. So as we bring 2023 to a close today, and we will wake up in 2024 tomorrow, I truly believe the Spirit of God has been and is cranking on some souls here at New Covenant. He's probably been cranking and stirring and tugging for a while. He's been telling you things and giving you certain unctions and stirrings and desires and paths that he wants you to take. He's telling you to do things and make decisions and make moves. He's been calling you to something. Maybe he's even highlighting a different career path and... Maybe he's calling you to move somewhere. Maybe he's calling you to to go minister to a specific someone or a someones. Maybe he's calling you to leave it all and do something real crazy like ministry. I believe 2024 is the year of leklaka for the people of God. No more playing around. No more playing around. It's the year of leklaka. And I know, because I, I can see it. I can see it. Just, I feel like spiritually in that spiritual realm, however all that thing works, like I, I can see it in some of your eyes. You're like, oh. Mm. oh, I was hoping this would be an easy morning at church today. But you're feeling the overwhelming love and presence and stirrings of God, and you're just, oh. mm. you're in good company. You're in good company. 2024 is a year of get going for the saints. Maybe the Lord's been calling you for a while, and perhaps due to fear, you've just been paralyzed in your obedience. (laughs) Just because he hasn't given you all the details, and you're like, when you give me that final detail, oh, I'll go do the thing. And he's like, oh, ain't how it works. Maybe you've been ignoring his call because you don't really want to do what he's actually calling you to. I'll give you two hands on that one. I'm all kinds of guilty of that. You may be afraid that if you actually raise the white flag, (laughs) all right, Jesus, you got me. You got me. Here I am. Maybe you're afraid that if you surrender to his will, surrender to his calling, that you're going to end up with the lamest, most boring, miserable life. Those are real thoughts. I'm trying to interject a little humor because I feel like the the humor and just being a little lighthearted can maybe break through a, a little more. But we know these are real thoughts in our humanity. I've had these thoughts, but I can promise you surrendering to his will 
is the most beautiful, the most meaningful, and the most purpose-filled, not the easiest, but the best life you can ever live. One final thing, and we're done. I've learned in my wee little bit of experience that this faith walk is a process. Of course, he wants us to be busy out there doing, not just busy for busy's sake, but he wants us to be busy about the Father's work, ministering and blessing and loving others wherever that may be. But he has a process, and it takes time. He's continually transforming us from the inside out to be more and more and more like our example, King Jesus. And, and this is the heart of discipleship. I can't draw a perfect, cute box and be like, step one, step two, step three, boom, go be a disciple. No, it don't work that way. But it's a process. And if you just throw yourself headfirst, boop, into his arms, he will not fail you. When you do this, I can't promise you you'll wake up the next morning and it's just going to feel cozy. <laughs> because it may very, may very much not seem good. Or you'll question like, oh, I just made the biggest mistake of my life. This doesn't seem good, doesn't feel good. I thought this was of the Lord. But it may be at times downright confusing and aggravating. And you just got to go in the woods and scream and punch trees and things. That's real. <laughs> That's real. But I promise you, if you lek leka, go forth and get going into the unctions that the Lord is putting inside you. Obeying his promptings, obeying his callings, he'll never fail you. In fact, if you'll give him time and allow the process to roll out, he will blow your mind of how intimately involved and in the know he is of every detail of your life. I recently heard this statement and it hit me deep when I heard it. And here's how it goes. As you obey the will of God in your everyday life, you will walk into your destined will of God for your life. Yeah. Just leave, go back, just leave that up there because I, I might take a minute just chew on a little bit. So we'll leave that up there for a minute. But as you obey, as you lek leka and go forth in obeying the will of God, a.k.a. it just means obeying the instructions laid out in his word. <laughs> Not don't need 10 books to tell you what the will of God is. Just obey what he has given us in his word. <clears throat> if we do this in our everyday life, he will guide you into that destiny, those desires that he's put in you. It's just a process. As he sees your obedience, your faith, your heart turned wholeheartedly towards him, doors will unlock and open before you. Ministry opportunities will just... They'll just come your way and you will end up in the craziest situations that cannot be explained because it's not you it's him and he will use you in the wildest ways all because you chose to obey and lech lecha can we stand I'll read you one more verse Pray a blessing, and we're out of here to go. Lech, lecha. Hebrews eleven six. Now without faith, <sighs> there it is. Now without faith, it's impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that He exists, and that He is a what rewarder of those who seek Him. Father, here we are. 
We are just uh, people who put our trust in you and really don't know what we're doing. So we really, 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 really need you. And we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your spirit. And Lord, if we are guilty of just leaving your spirit on the shelf and walking out the door every day, we're sorry and we repent. And in Jesus' name, I think we can corporately just ask this, that we want to walk in your spirit. Please continue to have mercy and kindness. (laughs) And maybe a little more long-suffering with us. (laughs) We love you, Lord. We're trusting you, and we want fresh days ahead that are effective and fruitful for your glory. So in Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Y'all be blessed.